not entirely <coughs> a new problem in Auckland. In the middle of the last century, the councils of the day, or the city council really, um, had to deal with the housing crisis and it also there was a complication of slum clearance whereby there were, were significant parts of the town uh, around this area um, where the dwellings were completely substandard, um, where there were e epidemics of um, typhoid um, uh, over the decades and they had to be cleared and the housing, the council housing we see in Grays Avenue, for instance, is an outcome of, of, of that work, or former housing, former council housing. So in those days, the, the government and the councils, and um, Councillor Watson talked about the Wellington City Council, councils and the government had a role in providing what is now called social housing. In recent years, with the advent of neoliberalism, we have relied on the market, this, this council in particular, um, the housing accord <coughs> between the government and the council is not about the government and the council building houses. Essentially, it's enabling the market to provide, enabling, facilitating the market to deliver. The only problem is, in this particular area, the market doesn't deliver very well at all, um, and we've heard that, and we've heard, heard it also from the representative from Grey Power. M Madam Chair, the, the very respectful and gentle submissions are from the public and from those agencies today may be the first flutter of a breeze of a weather change. Yesterday in Washington DC, scores of senior citizens were arrested by the police. In a major protest that's been going on, it's still going on, the biggest civil disobedience demonstration in Washington DC. What's it about? Nominally, it's about money and politics, big corporations lobbying and funding politicians and all that stuff. But essentially, it's a sign that the public's tolerance of the neoliberal model is coming to an end. And whether um, we act on this notice of motion, I'm sure it will be carried, whether we act on it or not, sooner or later, this council will be back with the government, a future government, in providing houses because it's the only solution. So Councillor Casey and Councillor Watson's notice of motion is really a pathfinder that it's time that we got active. Now, there's gonna be all sorts of debates about consultation and long-term plan and the annual plan and, you know, the, the consultation was somewhat guided at the meetings I was at, but nevertheless, the public can submit on whatever they like in our $3 billion budget and we need to respond to it. But one thing we can't argue about, Councillor Darby mentioned it, that we do have a portfolio of housing stock and a lot of those houses, a lot of those dwellings are locked up because we haven't maintained our own housing stock. Councillor, right Councillor Casey is uh, presaged a, a, a major change in our role at this stage, we're not even doing the limited work that, that our, our, the portfolio that the other uh, TLAs, not Auckland City, um, left to this Auckland Council. So we really need to lift our game and start maintaining those substandard dwellings that Council Derby wouldn't take his dog into and make a start there. Thank you. Well, we've done that Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor. Just want to acknowledge um, the seniors panel uh, here. It's great to see you, and this is exactly what you should be advocating on. Uh, Richard's not here, but this is an issue that he has strongly promoted through many, many years, and in particular in the last term. Councillors, I just think we need to support this motion.
for the sake of continuing the discussion because it's an important one for no other reason than that. Even if you don't like it, and there are parts of it that I can't support, and I'm going to explain why. It would be fairly strange coming from, uh, from myself who, uh, and I think probably in the first budget that I led through, talked about the fact that we were not going to sell housing for the elderly. I've made a very clear commitment on that. That commitment remains, and we have not. And I suspect that the discussion that will ensue over the next five or six months will not find anyone prepared to make that statement. So um, firstly to Councillor Cam and his exhortation that we should not debate this stuff <coughs> and await the outcome of elections, nonsense. This, uh, this chamber was elected to govern for three years to the last day and we should absolutely be through and over all issues and maintain our focus to the end of that and you all know we've got a lot of work so we are going to continue to focus to the last day and there's no exceptions for elections so keep focused secondly I support this with a caveat and the caveat is this you could read that amendment both ways, and I think that's some of the concerns that have been expressed by Councillor Chris, Councillor Cullen. <coughs> Does this mean we actually put the money up as a council, and I think Mike, Councillor Mike's in that vein, or do we get into partnership and ensure that our partners make sure that they build on the Council for the LD options? That was always my intention. I never came to this chamber with a mandate to basically build more housing for the elderly stock at a rate pass money. I'm pretty clear with that. And in the two election campaigns that I've fought, there's no way that I did that. But there is the opportunity for us to enable, and so that's why I support this, because it says enable. It doesn't specifically say us, but it could, depending on how this discussion goes forward. It will not end in May, and it will not end in October. It'll go on for the next year or two at least. Because as we know, when we consent any sort of building development in this city, it takes a year for anything to get on site. So, you know, we, we, we have got a long discussion, and I want this discussion to continue because it is an important philosophical debate. So, we own 68 housing for the elderly villages. And look, my last figures were 1,500, not 1,400. So we've got a lot of units. And we still hold them and I suspect we'll continue to hold them, but I want us to develop those, and this was the intention, not just double, but potentially triple or quadruple the numbers on those villages, because they sit on a lot of land. And they could also sit on this land and be a part of intensive development opportunities. So um, we have had parts of this discussion and I agree with Councillor Casey, we haven't specifically debated this part of it. Are we in it? No, we haven't, Councillor Webster. Are we in it or are we out of it? And if we're in it, how are we in it? And if we're out of it, what sort of partners do we have? And so, uh, Councillors, I think that uh, given the nature of our holding uh, and the fact that I think it is critical for us to at the very least find partners to build on our housing for the elderly units, we should have this discussion and allow it to continue to run and enable it to run. Uh, the um, final comment that, that I would make is this. There's a bit of talk about um, the moral obligations or otherwise for housing and how we buddy up with the government around this issue. And yes, that relationship is important and critical, but it's not the <coughs> only part of the relationship. There's a third party here, and that is either the charitable organisations or the private organisations who are getting into this space. Our balance sheet is under severe strain. You know, and as we go along and, and, um, and have this discussion, which I hope we will, uh, we're going to need to reflect on this and beside all the other priorities got. You know, I was hugely amused the other day with the debate around the stadium on the waterfront. 
three quarter billion dollars and where was that money going to come from? What a joke that was. We have got so much stuff that we have got to prioritise as being critical for this city. And so to the members of the panel, we will be bearing that in mind most significantly when this council and then the following council continue to discuss and debate this matter uh, as to where the priority sits in our spend. And uh, so, you know, I've, I've clearly made transport number one priority in terms of spends for council because we just wouldn't over 50 or 70 years. But this would weigh up against that if we decided to get active. But I do not support council putting funding specifically into this, but I sure support us having that debate and enabling the possibility of more housing for the elderly units in our community. And Bill, finally, it's just not about affordable housing to buy, it's about affordable housing to rent. And that's where we need to try and help the market a bit, where we can. Okay, thank you. Now we've got a whole range of speakers and a long agenda. So it seems to me, just listening very carefully Adam and making Chair, notes. I'm move, move I'm the motion now be put? Well, second that, I Madam Chair. Okay, I was just going to try and find a sensible way through that I thought might be yep, helpful. Might be but <laughs> Councillor Quax, as <laughs> usual, we move the motion be put, we have to do it. So we'll do that. Do I get my right of reply? No. Do I get my right of reply? No, it has to be put. By division, then. Be put. No, yes. That has to be put. Second that's what we know that. So that's what we're doing. Put it. By I thought by, it's been called for by division, so I'm sorry. But the staff need to do that. Can we start it, please? Your Worship? Aye. I'm sorry, can I clarify? We're putting the motion... Just the mo to this is the... We are voting on yes. whether the motion be put. It's been clear. It's a closure motion. We're voting on a closure motion. Okay, we'll just wait for it to come on screen. Your Worship, vote. Aye. Aye. Councillor Nye? Aye. Councillor Brewer? Or. Councillor Casey? No. Councillor Cashmore? Or. Councillor Clive? No. Councillor Cooper? No. Councillor Darby? Against. Councillor Filipina? Against. Councillor Fletcher? Yes. Councillor Crum. Poor. Councillor Lee. Aye. Panamani. Yes. Councillor Penrose. <laughs> yes. No, I my answer. Councillor Quack. Yep. Member Tai Party. Aye. Councillor John Walker. Aye. Councillor Wayne Walker. No. Councillor Watson. Yes. Councillor Webster. No. Councillor Wood. No. Mayor Hulse? No. Oh, it's carried 13, vote to 9, so we are now... We need to put it, so we're now voting on the notice of motion. The right of reply. Sorry, you get... It doesn't preclude the right of reply, though, I don't think. No. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's right. It doesn't. Right. Councillor Casey, right of reply. Yeah, none of us can say what we want to say and why we want to vote against it. And that's why we were given the right to vote and we voted against the notice of the closure motion, but it went through nonetheless. Madam Councillor Chair, Casey. What about answers to the questions? Does that close that too, does it? No. You'll get that back? Oh. Sadly, that's it. I'd just like to say a couple of things in closing. The first is, this is no major departure from current policy. Yes, it is. <sighs> Sorry, is that an interjection? Well, I just Shh. wait. Councillor Casey, just... This is no departure from current policy. Money. The action says, while maintaining at least the existing number of units. It doesn't say maintaining the existing number of units. It doesn't say that. So... Forgive me, I was surprised at the Chief Finance Officer saying that it, wasn't, that it could never be contemplated. It doesn't say maintain the existing number. It says maintain at least. What does that mean? It means increase. Maintain at least means increase. That's what this is doing. It's making it clear. Why is it important, Councillor Darby? Because this is the direction setting for Panuku to give to Selwyn. So are you happy for it to go through as maintain at least, which means, according to the senior finance officer, it doesn't mean increase, it means maintain. So why don't we take the words out and just maintain it? 
Because we want to increase, and that's what Panuku said to the seniors panel, there is an expectation that we will increase. So all I'm doing is putting that expectation into the words in the action, which will then direct Panuku, which will then direct Selwyn, which as Sue outlined is absolutely the right process to go through. The one thing that hasn't been mentioned, which was again been mentioned to the council and to the seniors panel, is that there are 380 older people waiting to get into our units. A point of order, we Madam have 1,412 <laughs> units, and there are 380 people waiting to get I'm into them. 